Welcome to The Warehouse. Have you ever heard a sermon and thought, how in the world did he discover that? Or where did he get that idea? Every week at Cornerstone Church, two teams dig into the biblical text that will be taught during our weekend services. We spend hours talking about the text, the context, the culture of the time, you name it. But you can't stuff all that into a 30-minute message. That's where we come in. We're going to show you the stuff in the warehouse that didn't make it to the stage. Hey, Stephanie. What, hey, Jay. What is your favorite scent? I'm doing a fall scent. You guys can do whatever scent you would like to do. It's fine. if Fall nice. scent. No, yes. fall scent. Yes. Your favorite autumnal smell. I, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. I don't know what it means. I, I don't know why you're like trying to subdivide and you say, because you're like saying a, like, like, hey, does it I, shift? Yes. Yes. In different seasons at different times, I like different smells to be happening within <laughs> like my space. So you're so, just saying you want to talk about your favorite. You don't want to talk about your favorite smell, period. Right. You have four favorite smells, one for each season. I would agree Ooh, with that. What are your four favorite smells? No, we're so. not doing all of that. I'm talking about fall because that's the season we are in going into because we're not fall yet anywho this listen confusing just go with it i'll get out what is your favorite fall scent <laughs> thank you what nothing go for it okay oh man now did I'm you like, lose it <laughs> oh no oh, like, <laughs> after all quick, that wind quick. up no it's like fall it's back like, to summer fall back no, to no, summer. no 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 it's like coffee pumpkin and vanilla so just that's pumpkin three. spice latte <laughs> yeah sounds great yeah that's it. Those are, I feel like she's like, hey, I can't just pick one. I have to right. pick four. But within those four, there's also three. Yeah. There are now 12. She's got 12 favorite smells. Yes. 12 yes. favorite smells. I would not disagree with that. Huh. Nathan, what's your favorite three smells? I don't even have to go that, fa that far. Absolute favorite, honeysuckle. Ooh. And not like fake honeysuckle, but like you're walking by like we, by our pond. There's yeah, yeah, just yeah. a bunch of like actual na naturally occurring honeysuckle. Yeah. That's a good And it's smell. only it's only for like a 10 so foot. so good. There's only like, I smell it and it's fantastic and then it's gone. Invariably, if you're walking with me and, I, and there's honeysuckle, I'm going to stop and yep. say, I love the smell <laughs> of honeysuckle. Yep. That's we're the same. We've got a couple places where it is. Yeah. Um, so, so I enjoy having breakfast in bed. I like waking up to the smell of bacon. <laughs> and since I don't have a butler, I, I have to do it myself. So most nights before I go to yep. bed, I lay six strips of bacon out on my That's George Foreman grill. Yep. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. I go to sleep. Yeah. When I wake up, I plug in the grill. Yep. I go back to sleep. Then I wake up to the smell of crackling bacon. It's delicious. It's good for me. It's a perfect <laughs> way to start the day. Yeah, it is. Until you that. burn your foot <laughs> and have to wrap it in bubble wrap. And have somebody put so, aspirin in your pudding cup. Would one of you rub butter on my foot if I, I burned it on a George Foreman grill? That's I, a great question. You know, I feel like it's the Christ-like thing to do. It's mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the third degree burn equivalent of washing the disciples feet. Yes. So that's a yes. For I, I, would, yes. I would probably yeah. do it. I and wouldn't you, like it though. And Parker? Parker you, says Parker probably would not. No, butter he would my feet. not put butter on your feet. I he mean. says maybe. <laughs> How about you burn your foot and we'll see who would be one to yep. rub butter on it. Put yeah, put. Would your daughters? I hmm. see one of them doing at it. For least you. One. At least yeah. one. At least one. Yeah, I've, your favorite I've got one? a pretty good chance. I, I've got a pretty good chance of going three for three. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm in a pretty good spot with all three kids. Right That's now. awesome. Trying not to That's blow awesome. it by burning my foot and making them butter it up. Yeah. It's like you could cash in on it, but then, <laughs> then the, I'm done. the relationship's done. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm 73 and I've never seen my grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, is it worth it? I don't know. <laughs> if I just wouldn't have had them butter my foot, <laughs> everything would have been different. This is weird. Uh, I uh, And then I would need some restoration. Mm. Yeah. Like hey, a hey, that's speaking. conveniently very much like what we're going to talk about, Jay. Man, oh man. We're in week six <laughs> of our first Come try. and See. Yeah, this is the first time I've said this as well. Uh, of our Come and See series, Jesus Restoring. One of my absolute favorite stories, if I'm being honest. One Ooh. of my favorite gospel stories. That's we're awesome. I didn't John, know that. Yeah, this is the one. John 21, 
verses 15 to 22 is where we'll be landing. Nathan, what was your big idea this week? Oh, I actually didn't give one because mine was very much like Morgan's. I was having a hard time like making it like, you know, distinct or memorable because to me, it's just like, um, I just see Jesus leadership and that he restores a disciple who mm. denied him. Mm-hmm. So that's mm. like the very simple principle. Yeah, that's a good one. Mine was when we are at our lowest, he desires to restore us. Mm. It almost rhymes. It did. Almost. It did. It's very sing-songy. Yeah. I'd sing. Is that a good thing? Very sing-songy? I've only heard that in negative connotations. Uh, it depends on whether you want to be sing-songy or not. Mm. <laughs> But that That's was very sing songy. The... That, okay. that was positive. Okay. Uh, I said, rebellion, repentance, restoration. No one's too far gone. Ooh, it's like the first time I ever heard that. Yeah, it, it was really good yesterday when I Sounds didn't like have it, it written yet. I feel like it's the tagline for a John Wick movie or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> success. <laughs> hey, what kind of context do we need fo- to bring forward into John 21? Bring it, Stephanie. You got some good stuff. Okay. So I don't have the context for John itself. Whoa. This, because that's okay, my other I'm sorry, notes. Guys. You've I already she... heard it. Yeah. We've been here for a while. Yeah. We've been here. You can okay, go back and okay, listen to John okay, again. Okay. Um, so this time I kind of focused more on like Peter, how he is a natural leader of the group. He's normally the one to first to react. He's had a rough go the past few weeks. So. <laughs> I mean, for real, he denied True. Jesus. And then this is where he's at. Um, they're back in Galilee going fishing. They need to make money. Um, this is what they tend to do. Um, so they just had finished a night of fishing and caught nothing. They're tired. They're hungry. And so one of the beautiful parts to me that I love in the immediate context is here before this reading is Jesus is tending a coal fire. And we see him in John 18. Um, this is where Peter denied Jesus mm-hmm. was in front of a coal fire. Mm-hmm. And so I love that imagery because John is putting this little piece in for us um, that is like repainting the whole picture that mm-hmm. Peter is denying him. And Jesus is like, hey, I'm going to restore you in front of this coal fire. Yeah. So I just really love that part. Yeah. The only other place in the New Testament where that word for coal fire is, is in the story of Peter denying Jesus. Yeah, and John 18. Um, so that was that was like my immediate context that I had for this mm-hmm. week. Mm. Dig it. So John 20 is the resurrection. Mm-hmm. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Jesus appears to the disciples. Jesus and Thomas, again, like top five mm. moment. I think John's gospel might just front to back. Might be my, my mm. favorite. Your favorite uh, gospel? Mm-hmm. And then John writes, interesting to me, John writes the purpose of the book before John 21. Um, John 20, 30 and 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Oh, yeah. And then chapter 21 kicks in. I do also think it's important to point out, like, this is the later of the Gospels. We have mentioned that before on the podcast, that this one was one of, this was the last one to be written. Mm -hmm. But especially with this part in here about talking about Peter and that. So um, just, we can talk about that more, but it's just really neat. So Peter goes fishing. Seven disciples go with him and John names five of them. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. So Peter goes, Thomas, the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, so that's James and John, two other of his disciples. Whoa. Yeah. So which I was like, two? yeah, which two? I think Andrew might've been there, right? Because Andrew fished Maybe. with Peter. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and the other part context wise is when Jesus called uh, Peter to himself, well, it was whenever Peter was fishing. Mm-hmm. All night without any fish. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about, there's like some legit deja vu moments here for oh, Peter. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been here before, like, taking him back to his his calling when whenever Jesus says, hey, you're going to be fishers of men, mm-hmm. um, no longer fishers of fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Luke 5 is where the bigger story of them getting called is. Nice. And then you also pointed out yesterday about how we could even possibly say, like, the timing of the morning of Peter denying him and 
uh, Jesus restoring him is about the same time frame as well too in the early morning. Yeah, I was I was just asking yesterday, and and we seem to think like, yeah, it seems likely. I mean, because um, when, since Peter's third denial of Jesus wraps up um, with a rooster crowing, which typically would happen first thing in the morning, it's like, I wonder. You know, is it like break of dawn kind of moment? You said yours usually. Yeah. Our rooster normally crows around 4 a.m. He's Once. super loud. His name is Poppy. <laughs> so people know Poppy on here by now, I feel like. Really? Hmm. We've talked about my chickens a lot. Okay. I don't think you've named Poppy, have you? I, do I don't know. know him by name. P-A-P-I or P-O-P-P-Y? That way. Like he's a popcorn Poppy. popper. Poppy. Yeah. Okay. He was supposed to be a Poppy girl. Seen? He's not a dad. <sighs> Whoa. So they're, they're about 100 yards from the shore, is what uh, the English translators gave to us. When the same thing happens, they fish all night, nothing, and this guy on the shore yells up, tell him to throw it over on the right side of the boat. They, again, miraculous catch, nets full and probably starting to break. And that's when John yells, mm. it's the Lord. Mm -hmm. Which that's the same thing that happened with their initial calling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the same miracle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same miracle. Um, so John says, it's the Lord. And Peter puts on his outer garment mm -hmm. and then jumps in and swims to shore. Yeah. Which is just, uh, reading it this go around has been r like heavy kind of on me it's been mm. like pretty and like beautiful but also heavy mm. so mm. so yeah so we 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 come up to this moment where everything is is reminding peter of when jesus called him mm -hmm. right that first moment of realizing this guy's the messiah i guess maybe not realizing but realizing there's something mm -hmm. about this guy uh, andrew saw him before one of the other gospels mm -hmm. says andrew was with john when he was baptizing and saw Jesus. And so Andrew knew what was going on and he had told Peter. Uh, and so he f said, uh, John says, it's the Lord. He jumps in. I think, oh my gosh, I remember Jesus is here. Um, I remember when he called me, here he is again. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had, cause there is those of you who know the difference between a charcoal fire smell and a wood fire smell mm -hmm. know that there is that distinct difference. Mm -hmm. And, and so like, at what point does Peter start smelling the charcoal, that same charcoal that he would have probably smelled the night that he uh, denied Jesus? So in my head, the hope, the joy, the excitement of that first call, and now I'm in, in the water, now I'm smelling the charcoal. Uh, I wonder what go, what's in his head mm -hmm. right now, right? And then Jesus says, come and have breakfast. As you're saying that, I'm just thinking about, I think it's kind of funny, like, your sense of smell, your olfactory nerve is the one that's most connected to memory. Yeah. So like the thing that can take you back to a moment faster than anything else. It's like, I smell something and it like reminds me of my grandma's yeah. house or oh, whatever. Yeah. And I'm just like right there. So that is kind of a funny thought. Yeah. Yeah. He had to be taken back there, right? Oh yeah. And then I think it's just, I don't think we can spend, I, I don't think we can, you know, overstate the importance of recognizing how crummy Peter had to feel after Oof. like promising Jesus that even if everyone else deserted him, yes. that he was going to stick with them. Yeah. And then, bef and then Jesus saying, Nope, before the rooster crows, like you're going to deny me three times. And then he does it like by the end of it, just like actually swearing saying, I do not even know the guy. Yeah. Um, like what a complete denial mm -hmm. of Jesus. And then to see Jesus, Jesus, killed on a cross in front of you like that has to be a had to be a terrible feeling because it's like you don't even get the reconciliation of like jesus you're right i'm sorry it's just like now you see your 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 leader your friend dying on a cross and it's like there's no no even closure to that mm, yeah. failure that's and Ra rochelle one of our residents in the communicator meeting today was talking how uh, she drew the drew the uh, line back to Jesus saying, if you deny me in front of men, I'll deny Oof. you in, in front of my father. Yeah. And, and then talking through, you know, what happens now, what happens next and making that an even bigger thing emotionally in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, all right then. Huge. How's about 
we just break it up the way you broke it up yesterday. So John 21, 15 to 17 is how we'll start it off. When they had finished breakfast, and again, the breakfast that Jesus cooked for them on the beach after he made the charcoal fire. Mm -hmm. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. What you got? One of the questions we'd had was like, hey, is this the first time Peter's encountered the Mm -hmm. risen Jesus? And as we look back there, um, it says like, I think right before this, that this is actually the third time that the disciples have encountered Mm -hmm. Jesus. So it's not his first time, but it like seems to be the first maybe like really personal or Mm one-on-one or intimate interaction that he's had with Jesus since Mm -hmm. the, since his death and resurrection. Yeah. So if he he was in the room, there's a good chance he probably didn't want to jump into the front row. Right. Um, Mm. Yeah. So again, we should, we should see this is, you know, there's three repetitions. So three times he addresses him exactly the same. Simon, son of John, Simon, son of John, Simon, son of John. Um, he does vary up the question a little bit. So do you love me more than these? And then do you love me? Do you love me? And then Peter's response varies just a little bit. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. And then the last time, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And then it's the Jesus' response to him, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Mm-hmm. So when we're seeing repetition, stuff like that, like, we're often going to ask the question like, Hey, is there inten- intentional variation in these? Like, is it saying something different, slightly nuanced? Does it change, mm-hmm. you know, does it change the tense or the word or the meaning each time? Or is it like, is there a, yeah. Is the repetition to show what's different each time or the repetition to show what's the same each time? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those of us who have grown up in the church, we've heard sermons on this our entire lives. And a good number of us have heard that the words for love that Jesus uses and that Peter uses in this bit of scripture, these verses in particular, they're different. They're the agape, Mm -hmm. phileo, and there have been entire sermons Mm -hmm. built on the differences between these two words. Mm -hmm. So, So going through just what I remember from sermons... And then I've preached from sermons that, uh, so Jesus says, do you agape me? Mm -hmm. And, uh, for years we heard agape, that highest form of Mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. And Peter says, yes, I love you like a brother that like Philadelphia phileo. Mm -hmm. Jesus says the second time, do you agape me? He says, I phileo you. And then Jesus says the third time, do you phileo? Mm -hmm. And he says, yes, you know, I do. Uh, So there have been hundreds and thousands of sermons preached across the world about this thing right here. Uh, And yet, as we looked into the usage of the two words Mm -hmm. throughout the Gospels, we found something that might differ from Mm -hmm. from the way we've preached this before. Yeah. So kind of digging into this, like, because that was a question that I had as well Is like, is there a difference? Is there a significance between him responding with brotherly love instead of the ultimate love? And from like studying, it says that like these two words are often interchangeable. Like Mm -hmm. it doesn't really make a difference on how he's saying it. And I think, wasn't it, John was kind of known to interchange these words Mm -hmm. quite often and he wasn't putting the significance behind it. He's just, um, yeah, there's Mm -hmm. no attachment of like significance behind the words Mm -hmm. that he's using here for the difference. So that may shock some people. If if there is, it's not. It's definitely not as clear right. as it's mm-hmm. been preached to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It seems like at at this point in time, so this point in history, the way the Greek language was used, um, and looking at the way the biblical authors used uh, this word in uh, used phileo and agape um, specifically, um, 
it doesn't seem to be that we can say that always whenever they use agape, that it means mm-hmm. unconditional God kind of love. And mm-hmm. phileo means a lower kind of just brotherly love. Um, it seems to be that they use them more synonymously. Mm-hmm. And if there is significant, like you might be able to say that later on in Greek language that they developed more nuanced meanings and, but it doesn't seem to be from biblical usage that, that there's a consistent. Yeah. Because as difference. we went back and, and looked at the usage, some of it, even Jesus using the same wording mm-hmm. and using the two different words for love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So talking about the father, lo- loving the father, uh, mm-hmm. one place he'll say agape, one place is phileo. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that was mind boggling. So it's okay to pause if you need to, and just kind of, <laughs> just kind of <laughs> think about that and Little reflect. Yeah. Tear eke out. Yeah. yeah. And as soon as the tear gets wiped, hit play again. We'll be waiting for you. Hey yeah. guys, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things that stood out to me as well as like how he is Simon, son of John here. Um, and normally mm-hmm. we know him as Peter. Mm-hmm. And then we see him picked back up as Peter in verse 20. So one of the commentators I read said that this perhaps was a subtle reminder that he had not stood on a rock in faithfulness, faithfulness to Jesus, um, where his ground was kind of shaky at this time. And so kind of like reaching back into that like who he was and now, and then mm-hmm. back to verse 20 is who he is. Mm. Mm-hmm. So John called him right there at 15. Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon's son, mm-hmm. Jesus called him in 16, Simon, son of John, verse 17, Simon, son of John. And then, Oh, Peter was grieved here in verse 17 too. Yeah. And so Still, in in none of these does Jesus call him Peter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anytime he's addressed in a narrative, like by John, whenever John's talking about him, he calls him Peter. Anytime Jesus is addressing him, he calls him Simon. Ah, so John. that's a good catch. Mm-hmm. So Jesus always calls him Simon in John's narrative. But I'm not saying all the time, but in this passage. In this passage. Sure. Oh, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. We would, you, you leaned more toward it being repetitive and not being a major difference between the feed, the tend, the lamb and the sheep. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. That's, that is the way I lean, Mm -hmm. but I'm not, I would not like argue with someone about it. Yeah. It just like, it feels a little, if you look at like, what's the, what the audience would have heard. I I, like, so John is teaching a mixed Gentile and Jewish audience Mm -hmm. after, after Peter has already died. um, Spoiler alert. Spoiler. (laughs) We'll get to that. Talking with them, like teaching from a theological perspective. So I think we'd have to say like the main thing that he's trying to do is tie the, the three denials of Peter Mm -hmm. that he talked about previously to three re like reinstatements and Mm -hmm. votes of confidence from Jesus. Yeah. Um, so we have to say that's the that's the main thing. Let's make sure and keep that mm. front and center. Uh, now, whether there's nuances to it, it's like I don't really yeah. think necessarily. I think John wrote very circularly and just kind of circle back to the same things over and over again yeah. anyway. Without, well, and like, he was a he was a he was a fisherman, not a shepherd. Mm-hmm. So yeah. maybe he yeah, he might not have known. Um, yeah, that's good. And, and remembering too that it is. So this whole story is one just with hyperlinks back across all of Peter's story, back to his call, back to his denial. Um, I, it, it's, it's really interesting. And, and it kind of reminds us of the big picture that, that the Bible is one story that leads to Jesus. One story of God creating Eden, us, us rebelling against his plan, and then his work throughout the generations to, to build Eden. And so that's kind of where... That's kind of where we are. If if we read this as just a story on its own, we miss the flavor of going back and reading the whole thing as one story mm-hmm. and seeing the beautiful hyperlinks there. Mm-hmm. Anything else from this section? I, I had a few more things. So like the more than these. So in um, how to study the Bible, we talk about like just reading through it. And whenever you read through it, like read through it again and then put question marks or circle the words mm-hmm. and So with here, it's like more than these. I was like, more than what? And so I put question marks Mm -hmm. right there. And it's like more than 
the fish. Like, of course, he's got to <laughs> love him more than the fish. More than the breakfast. This is a good breakfast, Jesus. But yeah. yes, I love you more than I this do. breakfast. Right. Yeah. And so. I agapao you. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to these fish. Yes. So Matthew 26, 33, Peter answered him. Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. So it's pointing back to like the disciples and him saying like that mm-hmm. portion. It's not more than fish. Right. So, um, In case you were wondering. In case you were wondering. Mm-hmm. And then also it's talking about, uh, I think Parker brought it up. Like this is not metaphoric or it is metaphoric. It's not literal. So like Jesus isn't saying like, hey, I have some sheep you need to go tend and take care of. <laughs> like, this is saying like. <laughs> back in nazareth yeah yeah is it yeah he's like on the cross he's like hey take care of my mom and then here he's like also <laughs> the sheep <laughs> i forgot about the yeah. sheep i don't trust john with the sheep yeah. he can handle mom i don't trust him with the sheep yeah. right so this is like a pastoral call yeah for him um it's the <laughs> Did you have that thought or were you worried somebody else might have that thought? You never know. Uh, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> if, um, if, if you thought he was being literal there, uh, email us at warehouse at cornerstone.team. That would be. I need to talk to you. <laughs> She's funny. Um, and then a pastor I was listening to you said this so well, and I just wanted to share it. And it says, Christ is removing shame from Peter. He is letting him pledge his love for Jesus three times as he denied him three times. Christ is restoring what Peter gave away. He's taking his shame. So shame is someone seeing you at your worst and they leave the room and you wonder if they'll ever come back. And so Jesus is coming back to him Mm -hmm. to restore all of that shame and guilt that Peter is feeling. Mm -hmm. And like, man, Mm -hmm. how much he loves. And I'm just, it yeah. it blows me away. Yeah. And we we tend to think that that Jesus will come back to us in spite of our worst, in spite of that biggest mistake we have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet this this story helps remind us that Jesus comes to the place of our biggest failure mm-hmm. uh, to redeem us and restore us. Well, and also the impact that it would have had on the other disciples to see Jesus restoring Peter, the one who was the leader of the group, the one who tend to like take the first steps and stuff. So, and we do see in Acts, Peter makes big moves for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. also the disciples needed to be healed of that too, to know that Jesus is restoring him. Mm. And also it won't, it won't be the first time that Peter mess or the last time that Peter messes up and has to be confronted and, um, and restored because Paul will do it uh, later Mm -hmm. in Acts. Yeah. Um, did we mention Matthew 26 from I or I, I did. 2633 about sure. though they all fall away. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, and yeah, then good. the word grieved there like just deeply hurt. So like the pain that he was feeling whenever he asked him and I don't think it was like a pain of like how dare you ask me this. It's like, oh man, like he's recutting open a wound mm. that he's already been feeling and so just Jesus is wanting to heal him of that. Man, I think it was all the above. Yeah. Hurt that he was being asked, hurt that he had to ask. I think, you know, I think that's Mm -hmm. um, that thing, you know, you've, you mess up and your mom doesn't trust you anymore. And she's like, no, can I trust you with this? And you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, what did Mm -hmm. I do? Um, Yeah. He was vexed. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think, so you have like, it's not, it wasn't just Jesus saying, Hey, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just Jesus saying, I know that you love me, but like allowing Peter to say with the same lips that said, I don't even know the man, allowing him to say, I do love you. Mm -hmm. I do love you. I do love you. Yeah. Um, Like, you you know it. You know everything. And so you know this is true. Yeah. This isn't just me flapping my gums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then, like, what's happening right there? I mean, Peter's saying it out loud. Also, Jesus not denying it and saying, like, no, you don't. You you just denied right. me back there. But him him like confirming it by saying, "I trust you with the, with the sheep." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's just a big deal. It, like, yeah, you, huge. It. I just wonder, like, you know, Peter's been promised this. He's been promised that on you know he's going to be part of the rock on which uh, the church is going to be built. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you you have to wonder, like, after you've blown it so big, like, 
man, did I just ruin all my shots at like actually being who Jesus thought mm. I was whenever he said, yeah, I'm, I'm happy being part of the crew that builds the church. Yeah. Um, I know I've blown it. I'm not going to be the rock anymore. Yeah. yeah. And so then to come for, for it to come back and Jesus say, I still trust you. Feed my lambs. Yeah. Tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Yeah. It's not just, are we okay relationally, but I still trust you with the church. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else from that section? No. That's for me. All right. 18 and 19. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This, he said, to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. That was the part that mm-hmm. was really hard for me yesterday. It, I'd like, so one, John R.A. knows how Peter died. And so him adding this part in verse 19, where it says, this is this, he said to show by what kind of death he was mm-hmm. to glorify God. And so if you don't know how Peter died, he was crucified as like the um, biblical church history, tradition. Church, church tradition yeah. there it is, says that he was crucified upside down mm-hmm. uh, because he didn't feel like he was worthy enough to be crucified in the same way Jesus was. And so this whole part to me is just like, ah, uh, mm-hmm. like, man, that's heavy. And did Peter, like Peter couldn't have known, like he knows that he's going to go somewhere where he doesn't want to go, yeah. but like to know and he probably, and he did it with glory. Mm-hmm. Like he did it. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah. And it's, and there's been other pieces of foreshadowing of this too. Like whenever Jesus, like, was it, was it Peter? Who was it that was saying like, Jesus, we want to, we want to sit on your right hand. That was James and John. Yes. Right. And he's like, can you drink the, the, the cup that I'm going to drink and mm-hmm. be baptized with the baptism with which I'm going to be baptized. And they're like, yeah, we can. Yeah, And he's like, you are. You are yeah. Mm-hmm. And so like, Ooh, interesting. James, the first to be martyred in uh-huh. the book of Acts and John, the last to mm-hmm. die. Of an old oh, age. that's interesting. Mm. Yeah. So then, yeah, Jesus has told the disciples that they're going to suffer and they do aside from John, they all end up being martyred and John still ends up dying like on isolated on Island of Patmos. Right. Or does mm-hmm. he, no, he comes does he back. make it back? Yeah. He makes it back. Okay. So he's, and then, Goes back to Ephesus, I believe, is what oh, okay. tradition says. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, so interesting that, and you wonder. I would think we talked yesterday, Acts five, Acts six, where the mm-hmm. Sanhedrin brings them mm-hmm. and beats them, tells them, "Don't talk about Jesus anymore." And Peter and John were there and said, ah, "You do what you have to." Well, we can't stop talking mm-hmm. about it, and they left rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name. Yeah, uh, and and you wonder too. Thinking, all right, uh, Nero is the emperor, and you're going to die. You're going to be crucified, and to have have the wherewithal to be able to say, yeah, all right, but I'm not worthy of your mm-hmm. regular crucifixion because that's the way Jesus died, mm-hmm. and I'm not worthy of that. So, crucify yeah. me upside down. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then like in that moment. So, I mean, last time Peter was so you know first time Peter is confronted with this like. Hey, are you going to believe stay with Jesus or recant? He's like denies him three yeah. times. Mm-hmm. Neither like, cuz I don't even know. Him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then never again. Like yeah. even confronted with, you know, death on a cross upside down. He's like I'm not going there. Yeah. Which is like not only do I do I worship this guy, but uh I don't want to die the same way he died. Yeah. So do it different. Mhm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, just in this like Jesus is telling him the road ahead is going to be hard and you need to follow me through it. And, and I think you said it yesterday, Nathan, somebody did, but I thought it was so good. But Peter says before this, like, I will lay down my life for you. And he ends up doing it. Yeah. Mm. And just good. Yeah. It's just good. Mm -hmm. So anything else from those two verses? No. Uh, So again, some like ties back uh, after saying this, Jesus said to him, follow me. So that's what he said mm-hmm. at the beginning, yeah. right? You guys may have already said that I, and I missed it, but I just like the, yeah, the circling back. It's like, okay, you know, you're, yeah. 
yeah. you're in this. Yeah. A lot's happened since then, yeah. but your call is still the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to make you fishers of men. Hmm. I think about like that Peter being, so I'm just thinking about like the power of like negative reinforcement versus positive reinforcement and like the, the role of appropriate grief and shame in our lives. Mm. It's like Peter feels grief because of his, his sin and denying Jesus, but it's a kind of grief that leads to like repentance Mm -hmm. and reinstatement. Mm -hmm. It's like, Jesus doesn't like whenever Peter chooses like that, he's never going to deny Jesus again. It doesn't come from a place like Jesus scolded me so bad. (laughs) Right. Right. That's so good. That is so good to point out though. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, It's great. He's going to bring the hammer down. If I mess up again. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not Jesus is just waiting. He said, okay, this one time, but if you ever do that again, you're yeah. out. It was like the grace and mercy of Jesus to reinstate him that like makes him say, yeah, never again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that it's just so good to point that out because some people can have that fear that, man, I'm going to mess up so bad and he is going to discipline me and he is going to make my life miserable. And that's not what happens. Mm-hmm. Like he still is there with open arms. And I'm like, hey, I love you. Mm-hmm. And I just think, I mean, again, we're in a series, this is edging into application, but we're in a series talking about the leadership of Jesus and things that we learn, Mm -hmm. like as a leader, like resist the urge to just rub somebody's nose in their mistakes. Like that there is an appropriate kind of grief. You don't want to just let someone off the hook for their, like for bad behavior or whatever. Um, They should feel it. And like, you don't want to short circuit the process of grief and what it can do in somebody's life, but also you don't want to rub somebody's nose in it and make them feel like if you ever do this again, mm. like let, let kindness lead to repentance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Eighteen, nineteen. anything else? That's it for me. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. Finish it up with 20 through 22. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is it that, well, what is that to you? You follow me. <laughs> I th- I think it's funny that you kind of see immediately them slip back into yeah. a little bit of an old pattern of like, <laughs> and I feel like I have this conversation. We have this conversation like every day with our kids right now. Oh yeah. It's like last night. It's like, um, Hey kid two, come on inside and get ready for bed. And she's like, but kid one got to do another lap on his bike around the house. And we're like, but we told you kid two, this time to come inside. Yeah. Stop comparing yourself to your brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's, it is interesting. I, even the, the guys who came up with the, the um the titles for each section the section headings so the the section heading for verse 15 before verse 15 is jesus and peter and the section heading in the esv anyway before verse 20 is jesus and the beloved apostle Mm -hmm. so he jumped right onto john's john's wagon of saying he's not going to say john here he's going to say the disciple whom jesus loved Mm -hmm. Uh, what and i i gotta i gotta believe that their relationship was one in which uh that you know, James is asking, hey, who's who's getting the groceries today? And John says, I think Peter and the disciple Jesus love is going to do it. <laughs> I'm just eh, eh, eh. A little goading. I, yeah, got to be there. And Peter turned and saw. He turned uh, and saw John. So so here it's another hyperlink. G, uh, Peter took his eyes off Jesus again mm-hmm. right after his restoration. He took his eyes off Jesus and worried about somebody else. Mm-hmm. I wonder I if that's ha- like a misery loves company moment. Just like, yeah. how's he going to die? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to go and do it and do it joyfully. But hold on, John, what about or, that or, guy? Or, or. I had, so back to like the whole question things of me putting, so it says, Lord, what about this man? And I was like, what about him? Like, why do you care? Why are you so worried about him right now in this moment when you are with Jesus? But at the same time, I can say that reading the story, but Mm -hmm. I can also relate and get it because I can fall into like comparison and like, well, crap, am Mm -hmm. I going to have the only horrible death here? Is this guy going to do too? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's not fair. Nathan came in today just beaming from his one-on-one with Morgan, his first one-on-one, and he used to beam like that after mine. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now everything's going to be, what about Morgan? Yeah. How's he going to die? <laughs> no. 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 You no. don't know? You don't know how? I don't know. Oh. All right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. There's... So at this time of him writing this, Peter is already gone. Yeah. Like yeah, when time. he's yeah. writing it. Yeah. I'm sorry. He was writing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm with you now. Not yeah. at the time of the event. Peter was obviously not dead. <laughs> he, was, he was gone. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Oh, were you going to say something nope, else? There? No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say like, we do see this re- really immature behavior and stuff. And it's, um, I think it's also significant to remember that like day of Pentecost is still where everything like really changes for them, <laughs> you know, whenever they are indwelled by the Holy spirit. And that's where you see them step out in like incredible boldness and preaching the gospel. And like, that's like the Holy spirit power within them is mm-hmm. like really what seems to transform them. I mean, that's good. Kind of goes back to last week when we talked about how Jesus was um, full of the spirit, led by the spirit, mm-hmm. powered by the spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how we have to be the same, or we're, or we're going to be, well, Stephanie just got a yeah. shout out from the stage. And... Yeah. <laughs> that came pretty quickly, everybody. Um, Top of mind? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing at the top of my mind. Uh I believe that. <laughs> so back to the verse 22. Yeah. And... That's where I'm at. What? Yep. Um, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is it that to you, you follow me? So um, here he's saying like, Peter, I have a job for you and I have a job for him. You're going to be a pastor. He's going to be a faithful witness. You will lead a church. He will be my faithful testimony of who I am. So like currently we are reading John's book. book And so like their roads are not going to be equal and he has to be okay with that. And just how easy it is to fall into that comparison trap, but it's all about serving Jesus Mm -hmm. and we need to embrace how God made us and he's made us all differently. Yep. John led the, John pastored the church at Ephesus for a while, right? It's not that John was not a pastor. Right. Uh, They still have different. Gifting. Yeah, Maybe. Maybe not. They definitely have different journeys and different lengths of roads and like different paths that they're going to yeah, be on. Yeah. So I think the point is still. Yeah. Still true. Ooh, somebody, still valid. somebody mentioned that there was widespread talk in the first church that John was just not going to die until Jesus came back. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that one of you guys? Isn't that the next verse? Yeah. No, we're there. 23. The one that's outside of oh, this text. That's, that's what it was. Right. I mentioned it. I'm like, hey, yeah. wasn't it? And I'm like <laughs> trying right. to pull from some like <laughs> deep right. like church history tradition. I'm like, oh man, I, yeah. I remember, you know, in some deep moment of study that probably none of you have gone into that like there was some kind of rumor going around. And I think Stephanie's like, yes, yeah, verse 23. Verse 23. That's right. <laughs> the verse right after. And I, I had to say, that's the danger of copying and pasting the text into a Word document right. without the surrounding verses. Now I remember. Hey, cut that too. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Because 23 nope. says, so the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die. But if it is my will that he remain until I come. What is that to you? Yeah. So John's just like setting the record straight. He's like, hey, guys, Jesus didn't promise that I was like not going to die and that he was going to come back before I returned. What he said was that it's none of your business. Yeah. So I have a question. Yes. This, is, con- this I- is contextual. Yes. I think John thought he was not going to die until Jesus came back. So verse 24, where it says, this is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things. And we know that his testimony is true. Is he, he's saying he is the one that whom Jesus loved. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how I read it. And I'm like wanting to double check to make sure like, Hey, so at this point he is saying, Hey, I'm that guy. Just in in case you were wondering who Jesus loved most. It's it's the one who's writing this. Right. (laughs) Yeah. As in like, as in the case of pretty much all the gospels, like it, people have tried to refute that, that it was John, but that is like throughout church history. It's been John. Okay. You think he thought he was going to die? I think most of the disciples thought that Jesus was literal whenever he was saying this generation's not going to pass away. Mm-hmm. So I think most of them expected that um, at least one of them was going to be alive mm-hmm. whenever he came back. Mm-hmm. So I don't know for John, it seems reasonable. Mm. 
But what Jesus actually meant when he said, this generation is not going to pass away. He's actually referring to the church age Mm -hmm. that his followers were not going to pass away. That's good. That the movement was not going to die out. And it clearly has not. And it's just we're talking about it. No, and it's just kept getting bigger. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It is getting bigger. Yep. So we don't think John thought he was going to be like the guy in Last Crusade guarding the grail. What? It just been He's there. He's chosen for... poorly. Yeah. 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 We not don't... that guy. Okay. I don't think so. Not that guy. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones. Stephanie. I got that. Nope. Good job, guys. Indiana Henry Jones Jr. Okay. Yeah. Indy. Anything else? They named the dog Indiana. Nope. Anything else? I'm excited to hear that no matter how far we go after we blow it, that Jesus is still right there. Not that he's not that he's going to reach out and get us, but he's going to come to right where we are. Mm-hmm. He's on his way that he he restores, redeems in from our darkest and mm-hmm. deepest. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love that. Yeah. I think just Jesus here we get to really see how he interacts with them in their, in their failure and denial. And it's just, it's beautiful. Mm. That's it for me. Yeah. I just, I would agree with what you guys said. I think it's amazing how we worship a God who cares so much to not just leave us where we're at. Mm. I'm excited for one day when one of us disagrees vehemently with what the other two are excited to hear. That'd be fun. That's going to be a fun one. Uh, Maybe next week, come with something heretical. You got it. If you'd like to also come with something heretical, email us, guys. Warehouse at cornerstone.team. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Uh, Until then, the warehouse is closed. Peace. Peace.